In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From the throne of endless glory To a cradle in the Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the Come and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross, for even yourself, you saw the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the morning that you rose all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel, truth of old, shall not kneel, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who is resurrected. and praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King. Welcome back this Wednesday night. We are going to be in Jonah chapter 2 tonight. We're going to look at the whole chapter. Although not 
any of the chap- none of the chapters are very long in Jonah for actually the next three weeks tonight. The next two, we're going to be looking at a chapter at a time. But don't worry about those. Though, that it's not, they're not long. Um, but tonight, what we're going to see in chapter two is Jonah is in the belly of the fish. Chapter one ended that God had appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of fish for three days and three nights. And, and while he's there, he says a prayer. And chapter two is this prayer that Jonah prays uh, from the belly of the fish, but but it ends like this, and, and I think this is the focus of his prayer. Here's what he cries at the end. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. So, so Jonah cries out, salvation belongs to the Lord. And so the, the question comes is, is why does Jonah cry this out? Why does he cry out, salvation belongs to the Lord. What is, what is the purpose in this? We're, remember, this is a story of God's mercy and compassion. And we're going to see that in Jonah's salvation here. So first, why does Jonah cry, salvation belongs to the Lord? Well, well, first of all, what Jonah does is he recognizes the position and the state that he's in. In verses 1 through 6, Here's what Jonah it says, And Jonah prayed to the Lord from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head. At the root of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. So Jonah, he's rec- he recognizes where he is. He, basically, he is in, spiritually, he is in total distress. He says that he cries out of the belly of she- Sheol. Sheol is the place of death. And so, so from a place of death, he, and he is in distress, he cries out to God. He, in verses 4 through 5, he talks about, in verse 3, verse 4 or 5, he talks about how he is drowning, how uh, the waters, in verse 5, closed over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me, the weeds wrapped around my head at the root of the mountain. So the mountains come into the sea, and at the root, he is there. He is drowning. His life is over. In verse 6, he talks about he is at the point of death. I went down to the land whose bars close on me. And, and it's this picture of he's going down to death and the bars are coming over to never be seen again. And, and honestly, he recognizes he deserves to be here. Again, like verse 3, you cast me into the deep, the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. We talked about this a little bit last week. He says, you cast me into the sea. Who cast him into the sea? I mean, who, who did that? Jonah's on the boat. The sailors say, what do we do to get the storm to stop? He, Jonah says, cast me into the sea. Now, the, I posed the question last week. What would have happened if Jonah said, it's my fault. God, I'm sorry. I will go to Nineveh. I mean, we don't really know. But we know God is a God of great mercy and compassion. What would have happened if Jonah had repented? But he didn't. He's running from God and he says, cast me into the sea. And, and, and so we see that, that Jonah, this is, honestly, this doesn't deserve any better. He's running from God. He's in rebellion against God. I mean, I, I say all the time, I would make a terrible Savior because there would just be so many times that I'd go, really? You're done. I mean, if I were God, this is a Jonah. Jonah, really? Really? Okay, just drown. That's not our God. He is a God of great mercy and compassion. Even when Jonah says, you cast me into the sea. No. No. Now, we see Jonah recognize his position, but here's what we see next. God rescued Jonah. He didn't deserve it, but God did it. Listen to what he says at the end of verse 6. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. Who saved him? Who's brought, who brought his life up from the pit? Not Jonah. God. 
you brought me up from the pit. Verse 7, when my life was fanning away, I remembered the Lord. And here's what happened. My prayer came to you into your holy temple. Jonah prayed. And what happened? God heard his prayer. Did he deserve it? Nope. God heard his prayer. Verse 8, and God did not forsake. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. Now this is a very interesting verse. Because when have we seen idols in in this? But we we see them in in chapter 1, when the storms came, the captain and all the sailors, the captain says, cry out to your God. So all these sailors start crying out to these false gods, hoping that one of them will hear them. Yet, at the end, what happened, when when the storm is quieted, it says they made vows and they sacrificed not to all their false gods, but who did they sacrifice to? To God. And then here is Jonah, who is a prophet in Israel, who is prophesying in Israel during a time of great... um, of during good times. The economy is good. Everything's good in Israel during the time of Jonah. And so the people are kind of turning away. And Jonah says, no, stop. It, 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 we see in other books and in, in Kings that Jonah said, no, look, stop. Turn back to God. Turn back to God. Yet Israel, Israel is not repenting. So they're hearing the same message that the, that the heathen sailors did. The heathens repented, turned to God. Israel is not. And guess who else is not? Jonah. Until here. Until here. It says, those who pay regard to vain idols, they forsake their hope in steadfast love. They forsake it because God is steadfast in His love. He did not forsake Jonah here though. And then in verse 9, it says, With the voice of thanksgiving, I will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. So all of a sudden now Jonah sounds like the heathen sailors who are sacrificing. He says, I will, I will sacrifice. I, I will pay what I have vowed. I'm ready to do it. And here's what he said. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Listen, I'm convinced that, that we've got to come to that place. Every day, I, I need reminding. Salvation belongs to the Lord. I can't earn it. I can't be good enough. I can't do enough. Salvation belongs to the Lord. He is the only one who can save. And I need to look to Him. I need to depend upon His mercy and His compassion. Because mine, mine gets me nowhere. I need to have faith in the God of mercy and compassion that salvation belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to me. It's not mine. It's His and His to give. And I need to see that in every day. I need to live in that grace and compassion. And as I do that, I need to be a bearer of grace and compassion to those around me, spreading the gospel to those around me. I pray that today, if you feel like you are drowning, That you won't forsake the hope and the steadfast love of God by looking to everything else. But today, you will look to God because salvation belongs to Him. Look to God. He is the one who saves. And when we're running and we find ourselves in a state of rebellion like Jonah, we stop. And we repent and we cry out, God, salvation belongs to you. I need you. So often we try to depend upon ourselves and what we do. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Trust completely in Him. God, we love you. We know that salvation belongs to the Lord. Help us to trust completely in you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Have a good week.